So we're going to be creating a CT scan animation using shaders alone. So I was recently at the Natural History Museum in London with my girlfriend. And wow, there's an amazing collection of rocks. But what I was really interested in was actually the human skulls and just seeing that and seeing how we've developed over time. There was this interactive experience where you could view how the human skull has changed over time and see this contrast, almost like a transparency. So I was just really inspired by this aesthetic. And I guess this is what the tutorial is about. So you've probably seen a tutorial like this before, but I've taken a few extra steps just to make this process a little bit more streamlined and just to make it look a little bit nicer. So yeah, I'm gonna be breaking that down across the tutorial. But initially, one of the main parts of this is the choice of models. I think this is really important. So yeah, where do I get these models from? So these models are sourced from an open access repository as part of the Smithsonian Digitization Program. So this is part of the Smithsonian Institution, which is one of the largest museums and research complexes in the world. They've got some incredible stuff and it's completely free and publicly available, which we love. So anyway, about these models, what's interesting about the bones in particular is that they're scanned in a different process than just photogrammetry or LiDAR scanning. So it's a process which is actually high resolution CT scanning. And what I'm guessing they do is they essentially create slit scans of this model and then create a distribution of points which can then be translated into a 3D model. And I guess the advantage of using this technology over something like photogrammetry or LiDAR is that you get both internal and external geometry in a non-destructive way. This is interesting because it's a type of model that we aren't usually able to get our hands on and you can't necessarily model this. Yeah, it's it's great for us and it's open source. So I'm going to leave a link in the description and hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Just before I get into the tutorial, I'd just like to let you guys know that I do have a set of online assets that you guys can download. It's mainly Photoshop mockups and it's just meant to help elevate your work and just take it to that next level of professionalism. You can go check out my Gumroad in the description. Everything is free and publicly available for you guys to use and take advantage of. So yeah let's get into the tutorial what we're going to do is we're just going to delete everything in our scene and we're going to drop in our ply file so we're just going to leave it at the default settings and just import and you're going to see it's absolutely massive so a good way of sorting this is just adding a default cube and we can just scale it down until it's roughly inside those bounds so if we just scale up a little bit like that so yeah, if we go into an orthographic view, we can see that there's quite a bit of detail in this, especially in the interior of the of the objects. And yeah, we want to be able to visualize this in an interesting way. So what I found is that using volumes is the best way to uh, visualize the interior. And other transparent materials, there's just too much reflections going on inside. So yeah, we're going to be using a volume shader. So for this, we're just going to right click here and just split the view. And I'm going to go into the shader editor. So we're also going to go into cycles, GPU compute, and I'm just going to set the world settings to white. And I'm just going to put this to something like, I'm going to set this to two, because sometimes it doesn't actually come out as pure white. Yeah. So I'm just going to scroll across and go into rendered view. And you can see we have our skull or our cranium. So I'm just going to add a new material and I'm just going to delete this for now. I'm going to add a volume or I'm going to add a principle to volume and I'm just going to plug this into the volume. So it's kind of cloudy at the moment. We don't really uh, get much detail. So I'm just going to drop the color to zero. And we're starting to get some of that detail, but I'm actually going to turn the density up to 10. And yeah, we we get that detail and you know you can stop here like you can get some really nice renders just kind of like rotating around this object and yeah because of the interior detail you can get some really nice stuff and because it's volume and it's quite a small object uh yeah it doesn't take too long to render for some reason so that's pretty cool uh, but yeah if you want this slit scan effect it's actually a really simple process so you want to start with a gradient texture and i'm actually just going to be moving to 
a default cube for this just so we get the, the principle of it and we can visualize that. So I'm just going to be using the same volume material. I'm actually going to change it to a principled BSDF just to get the, the look, I guess, and just so we can actually preview this. So I'm just going to be plugging that into the base color. So you can see we have this transition from uh, black to white. Uh, if we do control T uh, with node wrangler enabled, we can actually just uh, get some coordinates from this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this on the Y by 90. And if we just move this up a little bit and cross, I'm just going to add a map range just to center this. So I'm going to do minus one by one, which has centered it. And just to amplify this a little bit, I'm going to do minus five by five, actually. So we get a bit more contrast there. So this is great and it's creating a line, but we want the same value to be on either side of that line so it actually creates a slit going across the object the way we can do this is just duplicate our color values and just offset it slightly so what we're going to do is we're going to add a math node i'm just going to plug that in here and we're just going to offset it by 0.1 so yeah we're just going to offset it like that and then we're actually going to multiply it by itself so we're just going to add a math node and just multiply it by the original uh, i'm going to make sure it's in multiply where we get this we get this line and now we can use our mapping node to go from somewhere like 0.5 which is at the very bottom and we can set a keyframe here and then go all the way across and we can just set that to minus 0.5 and then just set a keyframe there and i've got linear interpolation set to my default keyframes uh, but all you need to do is just select these keyframes, right click, your, your interpolation mode here, and your easing, easing settings there. You can also use your graph editor to create some more dynamic looks if you're into that. But I'm just going to keep it very simple with some uh, linear interpolation. So yeah, it's quite slow at the moment. So I'm just going to turn my frame rate up to 60 seconds, just so it's a little bit smoother. And yeah, we can now get rid of our principled BSDF and we can use our volume. And yeah, remember to plug this into our volume output. Yeah, we can then plug this into our density and we can see this happening. So if we look at it, it looks like it's kind of doing the inverse of what we actually want. So yeah, a quick and easy fix for this is just to add an invert color, which essentially just inverts that. And it looks like it's a little bit kind of low contrast, not very intense. So I'm just going to move this along again, and I'm just going to add another map node. I'm just going to be multiplying this by two. So if we go back, we can see that there's now a transition of volume from the bottom to the top. And yeah, it creates quite a nice look. So if we go back onto our cranium model, we can see this happening. But I'm actually going to multiply this by 10 maybe, or even 20, just to get a bit more contrast so we can see that detail. And yeah, that's... That's essentially the tutorial. Uh, I've kept it pretty simple. And just to show you guys the look, you can do this with so many different models on the Smithsonian website. Obviously the CT scans create a great look because you get that internal and external volume, but there's also some really cool CAD scans, which I'd recommend you guys checking out. So for the CAD scan, there's a lot of kind of machined models like the Apollo 11 shutter with yeah loads of nuts and bolts and levers and stuff which create a really cool look. I actually tried this out a while ago so yeah that's what it looks like and yeah quick and easy one. I haven't seen anyone do this with volume it's always been kind of transparent stuff. Anyway yeah hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you guys soon.